This video is brought to you by StoneAgeGamer.com, a fantastic site for retro games, systems, accessories, and more. Be sure to check out StoneAgeGamer.com. Skip it up and that up. So what's up, kids? Rich of Review Tech USA, and we're getting more information about the Metro Last Light and Metro 2033 Remastered Editions, or Redux, they're calling them, or Redo coming out for the Xbox One and PS4. And I'll start off with the good news first, and you'll see why I'm making another graphics and resolution video towards the end. So the good news is, uh, both versions of the Metro Redux for the Xbox One and PS4, both Metro Last Light and Metro 2033, why I'm saying those out of order is beyond me, but both games will be running at 60 frames per second on both consoles, which that's actually a pretty amazing feat. If you know how demanding those games are on the PC, even if they're getting those games to run at medium settings on the consoles, to get them to run at 60 frames per second on both the Xbox One and PS4 is pretty amazing. They also went over, Deep Silver was talking to GameSpot, I should say, and they went over all the different improvements that are going to be to the game, and this is what they had to say. Both versions of the game will include advanced lighting, dynamic weather, more detailed characters with improved animation, more dynamic destruction, and improved smoke fire and particle effects but there is one difference between the Xbox one and PS4 version and I'm gonna let you guys guess guess which version is gonna have the higher resolution the PS4 version deep silver confirmed to GameSpot that both Metro 2033 and last light are gonna be running at a full 1080p 60 frames per second on the PS4 and they did not confirm the resolution of the Xbox one version so why is this a big deal why am I talking about resolution again why is this seem to be the biggest thing this generation well, think about it. Now, Microsoft has done some really good things, okay? They got rid of the Kinect, so they dropped the price of the Xbox One, or the now you could buy a Kinectless bundle. They haven't gotten rid of the Kinect yet, even though I think they will. Uh, they got Microsoft change around all of their negative policies. They're being very aggressive with competing with the PlayStation 4, and I applaud them for it. They aren't just sticking their heads in the sand and saying, la, 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 we don't want to hear what you have to say. But think about it from a, even a general consumer's perspective, okay? There is a woman, a housewife in her late 40s, and her husband wants a gaming console, or her son wants a gaming console, their daughter, whatever. And they go to Best Buy, and they don't give a crap about exclusives, so Halo's not gonna reel them into the Xbox One. And the, the, the housewife has no idea what's the difference between Xbox One and PS4. They just know that either their significant other or their offspring wants a gaming console. So they start talking to the rep at Best Buy. And he says, yes, both consoles are the same price, but games look better. And they usually, the multi-platform games, run better and look better on the PlayStation 4. Which system is that housewife going to buy? What system is that mother going to buy? What system is that girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, going to buy for whoever they're looking to buy it for? They're going to buy the PS4. So even though, PS, the PS4 console, I mean to say. So even though Microsoft has made the Xbox one more competitive by give, making a connectless bundle, even though they're doing all the right things to try to make the Xbox one relevant, the fact remains that the PS4 still has superior hardware and the multi-plats Vert every single time look better on the PlayStation 4. So now I, I think Microsoft is kicking themselves in the ass because they cut corners with the hardware, you know, by putting slower RAM, putting a more cut down GPU in the Xbox One to shoehorn in the Kinect, thinking the Kinect was going to be a permanent fixture. Now, hindsight being 2020, if they realized they were going to drop the Kinect and make a Kinectless bundle this quick, mark my words, there would have been faster RAM and a faster graphics processor in the Xbox One, because no matter which way you slice it, even if the Xbox One is the same price as the PlayStation 4, it has the superior, the inferior, excuse me, if I can get my uh, words straight today, it has the inferior multiplats. And if someone doesn't care about the exclusives, like Years of War, and Halo, which a lot of people don't, okay? And, and, and the same could be said about PlayStation 4. A lot of people don't give a crap about the PlayStation exclusives. 
people are going to veer towards the PlayStation 4 knowing those multi-plat games, whether it be Call of Duty, whether it be the Metro Series Redux, so on and so forth. They know the games are going to look better on the PlayStation 4 for the same price. It's not like you're spending more money on the PlayStation 4. It's not like, you know, the PlayStation 4 is 600 bucks and the Xbox One is 400. You're spending the same money and getting less performance. So leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Even with the price cut of the connectless Xbox One, when you hear about things like this where the resolution is still up in the air for the Xbox One version of Metro Last Light and Metro 2033 and it's confirmed to be 1080p 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 4 and you haven't bought a next-gen console yet, does this turn you off seeing all of the multi-plats be inferior? on the Xbox One? Does it turn you off to the Xbox One and make you lean towards the PlayStation 4? Or do you not care and you're a diehard fan of Halo when you're still gonna go out and buy an Xbox One anyway? All right, folks, make sure to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for supporting Review Tech USA. Have a good one.